All righty, all righty, all righty. Good morning. So, um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting conversation. I'm really excited about yeah. it. I think we're going to learn a lot. And the purpose of this live is simply to educate ourselves because as I was following along with the real dog box situation, one thing came very clear. Um, one, that people do not understand the process of a dog digesting bones. And two, people don't understand the difference between freeze dried, air dried, dehydrated. And um, so everyone is calling the products that are put out by Real Dog Box cooked bones when that's actually not the case. And so we're gonna clear that up. So welcome Dr. Lori Kozier once again. Once again, here we are. We're sorry we missed you Tuesday. I had, I had people saying, where were you? <laughs> it was one of those days, guys. So let's get started. Um, so let's talk about the benefits of feeding bones to dogs. Dr. Kozier, why should we as raw feeders yeah. Yeah. feed bones? Yeah. To bones. So um, you've heard me talk about this before. I divide bones into two categories, just like there are people who divide things into two categories and people who don't. Um, there's dietary bones, which I intend the dogs to eat and derive their minerals from. Those are part of the meals. And those may be ground up or, you know, suited to the dog size in question. And then there are recreational bones, which are intended for the dog to enjoy because dogs like to chew and to maybe clean teeth and occupy their time, that sort of thing. Um, so obviously nutritional bones fulfill a part of the diet um, and make sure we've got calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, all those key minerals. Recreational bones keep me sane, frankly, with four dogs. And, and they definitely do clean teeth. So those are, you know, that's why the dogs need them. Dogs need to chew. Yeah. Bottom and line. we've had a live about chews, um, Probably, Twice, I think. Yeah. And, you know, earlier in the pandemic and um, yeah, I think in the summer we did, we revisit it. And so for um, all of us, so whether or not we're raw feeders or not, most of us are feeding some type of chew to our dogs. So what is the benefit of feeding chews to our dogs as versus raw bones? Me same, same thing with chews as recreational bones, mental stimulation, a natural behavior, depending on the product cleaning of teeth, entertainment on a rainy afternoon, you know, something to do when you can't get outside or do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, chews span, I guess, the range from, you know, all natural, very high grade, whether they're raw or processed in some way, all the way down to rawhide from China, Nyla bones. I guess you could consider some Kong toys chews because the dogs do chew them as opposed to retrieve them or suck things out of them. So there is just a wide, wide range of things that dogs chew. Right. Things, so, table, table legs, your shoes, your socks. Yeah. And, you know, what kind glasses. Of yeah. glasses, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So now, so we understand that this is why we're all adding these things to our dog's diet people, right. I'm sure we're all clear on that. And before we move forward, I want to give a huge shout out to um, the people of Jules Animal House and the wonderful people of Earthwise Marysville, because they helped me pick out all of the examples that we're going to be showing you guys today. So I do not have an example of raw bones because I simply just didn't want to hold a, a frozen thing. But you guys know what raw bones are. Oh, Let's talk bones. about, you know, because you and I, we are raising different dogs with different experience. What raw bones are you comfortable giving to your dogs and why did you choose those? Now, are we talking nutritional or recreational? Um, let's do recreational. Recreational. So, um, I will do, and, and my dogs are all different. And just like we say, feed the dog in front of you, I would say, you know, provide a chew that's appropriate for the dog in front of you. So obviously my puppy can handle things that, um, Puck would be in trouble with. So this is one of my favorite things here. This is a beef rib. And I bought these at Price Chopper. I think I probably paid about a dollar a piece. They were marked down. But you can see there's the bone in there. But there's meat. 
here. There's fat. Uh, down here, there's more stuff. This is the, the end that attached to the vertebrae. So I love these and I can get them in different lengths. So this would be a great for the puppy or fame who's a, a smaller chewer. I would need something maybe that much longer for Puck because he's an over the top chewer. So I, I like beef ribs. Um, I will also do knuckle bones. I used to do marrow bones, but I did have a dog crack a carnasal tooth on a marrow bone because again, he's an over eager chewer. Dogs that chew very aggressively, beef ribs are great because see how they're flat? They can't get cranking on them so much. And they get fascinated with the meat that's on them. And they chew in a different style than if it was just a big old marrow bone with a wad of fat inside and they're just cranking away on it. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. For me, as far as recreational bones, I have a plethora of things that I get from my dogs. Um, one are duck frames, which actually aren't bones, they're more cartilage. But what I love about the duck frames I get is similar to those beef ribs, they're, they're still very meaty. And mm -hmm. because it's cartilage, it's soft, I just don't worry about my dogs having any issues with them. Yeah, of course, that does not mean that they're safe for all dogs. And we'll get to that um, down the line. Yeah. Um, I love, you know, um, lamb necks because again, they're very meaty. The only downside of lamb necks is that they're small. So um, a dog can chew it down. And if you have, again, the wrong dog, they may try and swallow it. My dogs do very well on those. And so that's something that I have plenty of. And in the that, that brings up a really good point. Chewing should be supervised. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not putting the dogs, you know, out on the deck and then going inside and, you know, vacuuming the living room. Yeah. We're supervising this chewing and checking on them. And when it gets too small, we take it away. Exactly. I always have something of high value on hand and I've worked with, you know, drop it with my dog. Mm -hmm. So when I go to them with here, it's like drop it and here you can have this. They'll give me the bone and take whatever I give them. The right. third bone that I really like are pork ribs, but I don't buy just any pork ribs. It's from one source and they're very, again, meaty. And because they're flat, the way my dogs eat them, um, they haven't caused a problem. But again, whenever, like when Apollo joined our family, I really was watching him carefully with each bone that he was introduced to, to make sure that these bones weren't going to be a problem for him because right. we both have four dogs in the house. Each dog is an individual. So what may work for Rodrigo may not work for Zoe, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's something people get hung up on is, you know, each dog must get something equal. It's like, no, not really. They must get what's best for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, for some dogs, you know, having more meat or more fat isn't what's best for them. So you're going to choose a different style of chew, whereas your other dog may thrive on that. Exactly. So treat them as individuals. Yes. Um, April has a good question here. Is it true that all bones can splinter no matter what form they are? raw, air, dry, dehydrated, et cetera. That's what I'm, I was just hearing. Yeah. And there's, you know, in this whole real dog de box debacle, um, there are people who are alleging that certain types of bones don't splinter, do splinter. You know, I was going to get a hammer and whack some bones and see, but I couldn't find my hammer. <laughs> well, uh, but yeah, I, mean, I think, I think depending on the circumstances, all bones can splinter or fragment or break. When I hear the word splinter, I think of poultry bones because they tend to break in a way that it's a long and narrow splintery thing. Yes. I've had client dogs that got into, I think they were pork necks and it was an inappropriate bone for that dog. And that dog bit off chunks and it got impacted in his esophagus. I, I'm not a fan of pork bones for most dogs because it seems like they're, the level that they break into chunks could be problematic for some. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think my beef ribs really splinter, but they can grind them down to a chunk size that could be problematic. Yeah. And the thing about it is whenever I hear this, this thing about bone splintering, I wonder what does splinter mean to you? 
because I think yeah. that when, as we're all following along with the comments and um, discussions on the real dog box, I'm wondering if people are thinking of splintering in different ways, because as you said about the poultry bones, you know, in the blog post that I posted today and I put the comment or the link in the comments, um, I don't give my dogs like drumsticks and drumettes because I've seen them when they're chewing on those, they seem to break off in long shards. Right. And that makes me nervous is my dog swallowing this young, long shark thing and having it pass safely through their body. Yeah. But um, as far as like, uh, just as an example, these are freeze dried duck heads. And we'll take it out. And so this, gross. You know, this bill, you know, this can splinter. People can say that that splinters because it's not when the dogs bite into it, it doesn't crumble into a bunch of crumbs. And, you know, it right. doesn't evaporate. It cut, it breaks off in chunks. Now, you know, it's funny you say crumble into things because way back when I didn't know better, I purchased a can of Evinger's uh, chicken thighs. And it actually is a bone-in chicken thigh. Yeah. And I the the thigh bone that was in that, literally, I, I took it in my hands and went like that, and it crumbled into there. Yes. Evidently, you can... And I think they're pressure cooked. You yeah. can't pressure cook it enough that it will crumble. Yeah. I mean, and it's I there's another brand that has the same thing. And it is a bone in the canned food. And if you touch mm -hmm. it, it just mush, it's just mush. It goes yeah. Yeah. And I think that people, if you've made bone broth and certain bones, when you make bone broth, if you have it in there for long enough, um, the bones will mush down because as I'm going through the bone broth, I'll pull out the solid bones. But if any of the bones just mush down, I'll just leave them in there. Leave it in, yeah. But um, that's not what we're going to experience. When yeah. We're and um, my friend Mary used to uh, feed duck necks, and she had one old dog who had trouble, and she would just take her heavy meat mallet and smash the duck necks. Mm -hmm. Now, she created bony splinters. And it was a raw, it was a nutritional bone. Did, the dog didn't have a problem and the acids in the stomach efficiently digested that raw bone, mm -hmm. uh, disintegrated it. I'm gonna have to do that science experiment where you put a bone in vinegar, like the wishbone thing. Yeah. Show how, you know, acid denatures, that's probably not the right term, but digests we'll use. Digests raw bone and, and makes it soft. And now that you brought that up, that's such a great question is one of the comments that has been repeated again and again is that all of these dogs have got, gotten sick or gone to the emergency room and bone was found in their gut, whether it be found by the doctor or the dog vomited it up. Well, yeah, and, there's the bone. Of course there's bone in there. Right. And people are so shocked. And that's my statement is that that's not how it works. Dogs don't eat either raw bones or these freeze dried things air dried and it just evaporates and dissolves in their gut. No, They're, the acid in their gut does change the consistency of it so that it can pass safely, but it doesn't go away. Yeah, well, and let's take a poll. Which of you raw feeders have overfed bone and seen the stool that your dog produces that's white in color and crumbles? You know, yeah. it's dry and, and you can even get a dog totally constipated by overfeeding bone. I'll see dogs that got into the trash after the, you know, the Super Bowl and ate a bunch of chicken wing bones. Yeah, the bone is in there when we x-ray because guess what? It's bone. It shows up very nicely on an x-ray. Right. And I most of those dogs do not have a problem. When, you know, this is a great question here by Stacy. What's appropriate for little dogs? I've always looked at bones as I don't want the bone to be something that my dog can swallow or after like 10 minutes of chewing, they're going to swallow. Right. It. You want it to last. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be depend on how little your little dog is, uh, what kind of dentition they have. Do they have good teeth or are they older and they have weak teeth? Um, and what's their chewing style? I mean, for a nutritional bone, I might say, how, how's that dog going to do with a chicken neck? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I love necks as a um, nutritional bone because they can work for a variety of dogs. For a recreational chew, it may be a small beef rib. 
it may be a knuckle, um, you know, or, or you may go to one of these processed products. And I'm not using process negatively, but just as a broad category of freeze dried, air dried, dehydrated, whatever. Yeah. Um, beef kneecaps are also small. Oh, yeah. 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 It can be small. Yeah. Those um, are, and they have a big section of cartilage on them, which right, is so you get softer some than bone. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Janice here says that her vet says that he stays in business because of folks that feed bones. And as a veterinarian, do you see a lot of um, injuries because of bones? And then what are they? I don't. I see I see um, more problems. And I would amend her vet statement to say folks feeding inappropriate bones. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just not selecting the right bone for the dog's chewing style. And, and I'll include antlers and other really hard chews for that. If you've got a super eager chewer and you're giving them a really rock hard thing to chew on, that could be a recipe for disaster. Um, so I don't see a lot. I do see, and as I shared on my own, uh, Spy had a slab fracture of his carnasal. And we had to take the tooth out because it was painful for him. And I know he did that on a marrow bone that I gave him. And there were times when I fed marrow bones raw. There were times when I boiled them and made them harder. And in hindsight, those were not good choices on my part, um, knowing what I know now. But, you know, we all learn. And I think this brings up the point of we're going to make mistakes. People are going to make bad choices. Let's not crucify them for it. Let's learn from it and do better with the next choice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Taylor brings up, just reminds me in her statement about her dogs having problems with the um, answers pig feet. And she says it's rich in marrow. And I would think that it would be because pig feet, pig on its own tends to be higher in fat. Higher fat. Yeah. I have no experience with either of the answers choose. So I can't weigh in. I've only done the chicken feet. I haven't done, I, I don't give pig feet to my dogs only because um, I, I worry about the um, fat level and if they can handle that right. injection of fat. And so yeah. um, it's just a personal choice. I haven't had a, a negative or positive experience it because I just never fed it. We're, let's talk about, you know, the other types of chews that we um, have. And so as I stated, you know, I went to the store and got props and so Let's start with air dried okay. and examples of air dried foods. And before, you know, let's explain, you know, in my reading, air dried is basically a very slow process where air is applied to the chew at, you know, in the, a temperature of 110 to 130 degrees. Yeah. And the reason why this is different than dehydrate is because dehydrated is done at 150 degrees or higher. So um, does that mean that, you know, cause this is the thing I've had this conversation with so many people is like, if heat is applied, then it's cooked. And so can you speak, what do you think? Well, about that? you know, um, I, I guess I would have to say the dictionary definition of cooking involves the application of heat. So I think you could say dehydration and air drying are subcategories of cooking. But so is sous vide, so is pressure cooking. There are all these different ways. So I think this is a time to be specific about what the process you're speaking of actually does to the product. Mm -hmm. now, for example, like Honest Kitchen dehydrated pet foods are done at 165. So is that better than 200? Well, if you're a fan of low temperature cooking, yes. I don't know what it makes, what difference it would make in the digestibility. We'd have to test it, but yeah. you need to really uh, be very specific with the particular process. And, mm -hmm. I, and if I had any doubts, I would call the company in question and say, you said air dry because there's air dried kibble. I don't know the temperature they air dry kibble at. Mm -hmm. And some company may do 120. Some, it actually may be technically dehydrated because it's done at a higher temp. Mm -hmm. so you got to do your homework. Yeah. And so one of the benefits of air dried is that the process leaves many of the nutrients intact. Right. And with air dried food, you can actually rehydrate it. 
which that was a surprise to me. It's not something I've ever tried. There mm-hmm. are many brands on the market. Of course, you know, we know, you know, real dog box. And yes, there's my post-it as I was organizing everything. Mm-hmm. This is the turkey wing that started all of this. Uh, this Koha is another brand that was introduced to me at Jules Animal House. This is pretty mm-hmm. much the only thing that they had. That was it air dried? What was that? That Koha cod skins are air dried? Yeah. Because I have, where's my prop here? I have uh, chill and chews that are freeze dried. And these are freeze dried salmon skins. Um, and many companies have those. So I guess my question would be, what temperature did Koha use? Yeah. And what I found is that that information is n- not always easy to find. I didn't look up Koha, but I did, as I was going through and just trying to find mm-hmm. the different treats that fit the different sections, I found that it was really hard to determine what was what unless it was identified on the package. This is another air dry. This is Codskin for nice. my Slime Plus. Um, Zeewee yeah. is another company that does air dried as well. And I mm-hmm. have this as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Zeewee is one of the companies that does an air dried kibble. Yeah. And, so, and, and so, yeah, that was, it was not easy to, to find the details of it. And mm-hmm. I, without, you know, throwing any shade to the pet store um, companies, the employees didn't know either. I mean, sure. we were walking around and they were like shocked about and had to go and look it up for me. They were looking up each one for me. And we mm-hmm. were all just so surprised at, you know, these companies would put that either, either they didn't put anything and you had to go and dig through their website to find out, is this dehydrated? Is this, you know, there wasn't a clear statement or if they did put it, um, it wasn't clear, for instance, with the air dried, well, at what temperature? Because, right. You know, if they're saying it's air dry, but the temperature is 165, then we know that that actually is dehydrated. Mm-hmm. So um, um, we have we have a lot of homework to do now when we <laughs> buy. Well, treat- and this brings forward the point that these are treats; they are not intensely regulated. Um, you know, you can you can call them anything you want, especially on a website. Your label has to be truthful. But beyond that, it is not regulated as much as a food would be. And there are no means to test them. What are you testing for? Mm-hmm. You know, how am I, you know, this, this beef rib that's defrosting, um, how would I test that to feed it to my dogs? I guess I could do, I could test the nutritional value of it if I could grind it up and get a homogeneous mixture. I can't assess the safety, suitability, anything beyond judgment. Mm-hmm. And um, Diana, for the package treats. Diana has a great question here. What does it mean for a bone to be digestible? Because that is one thing that people have critiqued Real Dog Box for yeah. is saying that their products are 100% digestible, but then people are seeing um, their dog vomits up um, right. bone pieces. And, you know, I think, I think it's foolish to say something is 100% because nothing in life is 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, we know bone is digestible because we feed bones and we don't see them come out and we do science and we test poop and we test pee and we can tell what went in and what came out. Um, but you know, was it just too much bone and the body couldn't handle it? Well, that doesn't make it undigestible. Just means there wasn't enough time before it passed out of the dog one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't even know if there's a real answer to digestibility. Um, You could look at the science and say, we know, and this is done in livestock feed, what's the percent digestibility of this feed product? We can tell that. I don't know. This this is a Steve Brown question. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll ask him. Wonder what he's saying. When I think about bones being digestible, I think about the fact that, you know, I go back to the you know, dogs in the wild. So I do believe that, yes, bones are digestible. I think what people think is that, as I said earlier, is that as our dogs are eating these things, the bones will somehow vanish and disappear and nothing will be left in their tummy. You know, if a dog, in my experience, when my dogs have an irritated tummy because little pieces of bone are still there, they'll vomit them up 
to get sure. it out of the tummy to make themselves feel better. It doesn't mean that they're sick. Doesn't mean that there's a blockage. Um, Ashley um, asked, do you think raw meaty bones are safe for kibble fed dogs? I think they can be depending on the dog and the amount and how much fat, how much protein. Yeah. There is no product that is 100% safe for every single dog. And every single thing that we feed and we put in our dog's mouth, whether it be a, a food, a chew, a bone, a toy, mm -hmm. has the potential of causing harm. Um, but yeah, freeze dried. Yeah. So I showed you guys the duck heads. I also got freeze dried turkey necks. And so these are, and the duck heads are from Vital Essentials Raw. I got mm -hmm. them from Earthwise. And um, can you break that in half with your hands? Let's see. Yep. Pretty easily. <laughs> Paula says, hey. It's like, here I am. <laughs> um, so so that kind of chew, and I have I have three set duck necks, which are just a little bit smaller. Um, you know, you saw how easily that broke. That is probably not a problematic chew for most dogs. You know, unless they're going to break it in half and try to swallow the, that whole big chunk. Mm -hmm. but that's I, My puppy gets those. And she lays there and holds them and chews them appropriately. And they're just enough for her. Or a small breed dog, they might be, the duck necks might be a nice um, size. Let me show you the size of these. My dogs are very happy about this stuff coming out. <laughs> smaller. Yeah. You know, it's a little over, probably seven, eight inches long at the most. And, you know, pretty small diameter. Yeah, and if you have a, a strong chewer, these are going to be like two second snacks. Yeah, dogs, you know, but they are they are wonderful for teething puppies mm -hmm. um, because they provide some chewing stimulus, but they're not too hard. So they're not too painful on tender gums, but they're enough. Um, so now let's talk dehydrated. You showed something that was dehydrated, and I think it was fish. Um, no, fish is actually freeze dried salmon skins. Uh, these are the the dehydrated fish skins from the honest kitchen. Oh, yeah. I buy these by the case. Yeah, I've had those in the past. Let me open this and just see if it looks the same. Um, I like those dehydrated sand, cod skin. Yeah. And, and you know, the honest kitchen as a company, I love some of their stuff and some of their stuff has changed and I'm not as happy with them. Um, but the one thing you can say is they're big on human quality. Mm -hmm. so they're kind of round. Yeah. Yeah. So, and their scales are on there. It has some give to it. So again, this would be a very light chew. I think these are greenlit mussels. So not really chews treats, but yeah. Those oh, those, are, I like those. These those. are tendons. Mm -hmm. Um, got these from Earthwise as well. And I like these because they're they're they don't stink the way bully sticks do, but they give you the long chewing that you have of bully sticks. The downside to these is that if when a dog gets down to the end, um, they'll just they some dogs will just swallow it and it can cause a choking hazard. So um, it can also any of those can also get stuck in intestine. I would take a chunk of bully stick out of a dog, and it was about two inches long blocking mm -hmm. his intestine. The other thing I always question with tendons and anything in the general, you know, rawhide-ish family is how was it prepared? What chemicals were added to it? You know, is it is it gross like rawhide? So that's a do your homework and supervise your chewing category treat for me. Oh, Kristen had a great question about calcium being available in um, the dehydrated duck necks and turkey necks and such. Um, I honestly don't know. I would not I count there. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't count on that as as a reasonable yeah. source of calcium. Maybe in the air dried, but not in dehydrated. And I I'm mean, there's, there's going to be on this. There's going to be something level. You know? Yeah, neither of my packages have calcium data. Um, that's not to say it's there's not some there, but I wouldn't count on it either. You know, I think we covered this all as the verbiage of chews being safe for all. That is problematic yeah. because there's no such thing as a chew being safe for all dogs. Right. And you're just, you just never know. So, I mean, yeah. there are things you can do with bully sticks and tendons. There's like the bully buddy, which I didn't bring out, where you can stick it in the bully buddy and it basically protects the last inch or so 
so that when they're done chewing it down, you just take the bully buddy away. It's a mm -hmm. big blue thing and um, throw away that last inch. You don't have to worry about your dog swallowing it. So that's the only way that I will give my dogs bully sticks or tendons is with a bully buddy or yeah. Oh, we're still on dehydrated. So these yeah. I'm guessing are dehydrated. These are trachea and usually they are dehydrated, but this brand does not have anything on the packaging nor mm -hmm. can I find anything on the website about how this was processed. And I've heard of some of those being baked. And again, the question would be baked at what temperature? Yeah. Um, so, so and then it, as a natural source of glucosamine and other um, cartilage oriented nutrients, I don't know how available they are. Apologies yeah. for thumbs up. And um, on it does have it on here. For the safety of your pet, observation is recommended when giving your pet treats or chews. Caution. Natural bones may splinter or break apart, causing injury. Supervise use and immediately remove them. Move the item from your pet if splintering occurs. Feed to your dog as a chew or treat, not for human consumption. So there is a warning. Like a pretty thorough um, yeah. cautionary statement. Exactly. Yeah. And you will find um, tracheas, I want to say, uh, hair today or some of the raw food co-ops will have fresh unprocessed tracheas that are essentially just raw. And that might be a more bioavailable source of nutrients. And this is, this is a great, great point. I understand the difference between air dried and dehydrated is the temperature used. But if you air dry for a longer time and everything that I found on different sites was that it was gently air dried over a period of time mm -hmm. um, for a longer time isn't the end product the same as dehydrated for a shorter time so you're just basically mm -hmm. even though you're baking it at 110 you're baking it over 10 hours I don't, i'm i'm assuming i don't know and, and you know a lot of this comes from research on the human food side you know some of the benefits of long and slow cooking which means lower temperature for a longer time is preservation of nutrients so I think that, you know, there might be more bioavailability um, and less damage to the proteins. You know, they can handle 110 degrees, those amino acids, and the time is not a factor. But when you step it up towards a 165 or more, then you're, you're denaturing proteins. You're also killing bacteria. Remember, they tell you cook your meat to 165 internal temperature to guarantee killing of bacteria. Now for us raw feeders, we're not as worried about that. But if you were, you might choose a dehydrated product over a freeze dried. And the whole point of a uh, freeze dried, because I, I didn't think we explained, is that no heat is used. What happens is that um, the water, the, the, the product is flash frozen and then a vacuum is used to soak up all the moisture out of it. Freeze dried product, right? And so we just, so we've gone over air dried treats, um, raw, dehydrated, um, freeze dried. And now let's talk about the cooked. And what I int was, was interesting about these, and this is um, a marrow bone. These are the kneecaps and then they had a rib. They don't call it um, smoked. They call it roasted. And oh how many people go shopping for these type of things and look at it because they've been told that cooked bones or smoked bones are bad, but these say that real flavors of beef slow roast it to perfection. 100% natural chews, you know, quality guaranteed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, oh. and it does say on here as well, natural bones can splinter, supervise use at all times. And if splintering occurs, immediately remove the item from your pet. Recommended bone size is slightly larger than your pet's mouth. Okay. Well, they're providing instructions. And you know, it's interesting because you put, brought forward two products that had essentially warning labels. Yeah. I wonder is, are those warning labels, are they there? Because the companies had reports of problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Kathleen and Holly brought up irradiation. Can you explain what that is and if it's problematic? Um, I have heard it's problematic. 
I'm not a hundred percent sure of the process that they use for treats. I know there was a huge issue with cat food that was sent to New Zealand that was irradiated and made cats very, very sick. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're doing UV light, that's probably pretty harmless. Um, other processes may be problematic. And yeah. you're going to have to go company by company and find out what that process actually is. Yeah. What do we do when we are giving our dogs these chews and something goes wrong? So a tooth is broken or there's mm -hmm. an impaction. You know, first, how do we even know that something is wrong? And then what do we do? Well, if you're supervising your dog, as you should be, you may, you may find the dog cried out in pain and there was a hunk of tooth on the floor. You know, it may be very obvious. Um, or it may be your dog's acting sick in a GI system way, whether that's vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort, what have you. Um, so you're going to seek veterinary care as is appropriate. You're going to retain the chew if it's still there in any packaging so that you know how to call the company. And that's your first phone call after you get your dog squared away with your vet is reach out to the company, say, hey, this happened, and go from there. Um, and be nice. You know, you're not going to get anywhere by yelling and screaming, even though you're, you're upset. But, you know, document things as best you can um, and decide what, you, what you're looking for. Are you just looking for information? Are you looking for restitution? What's your end game? I mean, I know you're not an attorney, neither am I. Mm -hmm. How, how, I mean, can we honestly hold a company accountable? Well, think of that, those warnings that you just read. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they were clear, I mean, I would say if I chose to give my dog that treat and they told me it might splinter and might be a problem and it needs to be bigger than my dog's head and it wasn't, then, you know, I didn't follow the manufacturer's instructions. So they're not liable. Um, if there are no instructions, you know, then it, I believe legally it becomes what's common practice or common sense. What would the average consumer do? And, you know, companies aren't out to make things that are out to harm dogs because, shoot, most of the people in these sorts of companies did it because they, they started off for their own pet and their motives are good. And from a financial standpoint, if your product's killing your customers, <laughs> We aren't going to have any more customers. So, you know, think, think about it that from that standpoint. And a lot of companies will, um, you know, work with you, try to make some form of restitution. But if they're going to go and do that, you need to prove that, you know, that really was the fault of the company. You know, nobody's just got money to just hand out or, um, pay for things that weren't their fault. Yeah. And the thing about it is that, you know, when I originally heard this story, and again, it's not about victim blaming, it's about just trying to understand. And I think that that's a normal human thing to do because we all have dogs. Someone ended up in this situation. We're now going to weigh our risk of ending up in the same place. Mm -hmm. um, with my dogs, as you said earlier, if you have a dog that has, you know, bad teeth or failing teeth, then the risk of a broken tooth goes up a little bit. If you have right. a dog with digestive issues, then the risk of having a digestive issue with a chew goes up a little bit. Sure. And so those are the type of things that, you know, not only we as pet parents need to think about, but also the brand and the veterinarian is going to be weighing these things as well. So it's sort of like, what was the situation? You know, when did your dog have this? You know, how much did you, your dog have? Right. Is this something that your dog is used to eating? You know, and, you know, those are those are the type of questions that we need to add. And it's not, again, about victim blaming. It's about making sure that we don't make this mistake in the future. And from the brand's point of view, which I think it's so important to try and just understand where everyone's coming from, before a brand is going to go through the expensive process of a recall, um, they need to weigh whether or not this is a problem with one or two dogs or right. is it a problem globally with everyone's dogs. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or, or sadly, one dog that was impacted by, you know, a treat. Um, you know, if 99.9% .9 of humans, dogs, cats, whatever, do well with a product, do you recall it? Mm -hmm. Because 0.1% did not. Yeah. I to me it makes more sense to beef up your instructions, beef up your warnings. Yeah. I did read somewhere in the that there was a card in the real dog box that described how to use let the me, shoes. Let me go get my card. And that and that the consumer in question admitted in a text that she did not read that card. Well, you know, then that's not the company's fault if they put the directions in there. So here is the card for the turkey wings. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, it has all the information, talks about the benefits of feeding turkey wings. Mm -hmm. They are dried below 125 degrees. Um, okay. They do not shatter like cook bones. Um, if this is your first time feeding a turkey wing, we encourage you to introduce this chew slowly. Although we trim some of the skin and fat from these wings, it may still require a short adjustment period if this is your dog's first wing. You could feed a quarter of the wing and take it away the first few times. Pro mm -hmm. tip, if you are new to larger chews, your pup may benefit from a small amount of fiber like Slippery Elm to help adjust to this new item in their diet. You can hold on to one side of the chew when first feeding to help slow them down or, tr or try a chew holder. And that's similar to the um, bully. Mm -hmm. Buddies yeah. that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so they, yeah. So they gave some information and, and I'm sure they're going to continue to improve the information they give based on this whole ex sad experience. But, you know, I feel for the woman whose dog spent a day in the ER. Um, I feel for the company who's been the, the brunt of a witch hunt. Um, often, Fan, with the fame's flan by people who had no experience with the company at all. Yeah. So there. So that is basically our chat about bones and shoes. I think ultimately, you know, we do have to yeah. really give some thought to what we're going to give to our dogs. And, yeah. um, and, and um, put Holly's comment up, if you would, under sure. Janet. Hey, Janet. Um, how many vets are owners? Vets rarely contact a company. That's, that's the owner's uh, responsibility. Um, and I would agree with you. I don't think a lot do because truthfully, most dogs, you know, maybe they get a little diarrhea and it's over the next day. Most dogs do not have to seek veterinary care. Yes, we have to take a little bit of responsibility, be careful. But even the two of us can't tell you what right. shoes are best for your dog and which not because we don't know your dog. Right. Right. And Diane says she used to get them. Um, and she wonders what um, percentage of people actually read the info cards in there. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is the first time I've actually ever read them. Yeah. Right here, right company, now. All the company can do is put it in our hands, you know, whether it's a human product, a dog product, whatever. Have you read the warning on your mattress or, you know, on a child's pajamas that, you know, what was treated with burn proof stuff? No, we don't read that shit. Shoot, you know, you get the the assembly instructions. Oh, I don't need those. I don't read those either. Yeah. Um, so is the company liable for us failing to take advantage of the information they provide? I don't see how. And it's, you know, one thing that I've been dealing with a lot from people, and I'm kind of over it, <laughs> is <laughs> the accusation that because I choose to support this company, then I am 100% behind everything that they've said and done. That is, in my opinion, a very short-sighted way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. Nothing is black and white. We can support people and not be, you know, okay with everything they say and do. I know that there are a lot of people out there that feel that real dog box hasn't shown remorse. They've apologized. Um, you know, they made a lot of mistakes and now mm -hmm. they're trying to make it right. But as a person who's not even, I don't own the company, I don't work for the company, just dealing with people yelling at me and calling me names for choosing to support the company, you can only be polite and nice to these people for so long. 
And right. then you do probably mouth off a little bit. Well, and when you're getting hundreds and hundreds of hateful emails yep. and actions, um, you know, comments on social media, whatever. I don't know if they've had phone calls. I imagine they have. Yep. On, you know, and it's like the pandemic. It's our first time dealing with this. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're not going to make everybody happy. And, um, you know, politicians, well, politicians go through this. They hire experts to manage their crisis news situation. You know, it, this is a huge thing that's not just limited to the dog treat world. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be missteps. We all just kind of breathe a little bit and see how this is going to shake out. You know, some good may come of it. And again, I feel for the woman whose dogs or dogs uh, wound up in the ER. Um, I totally understand that some people have decided that they don't want to support this company. They're not going to buy boxes from this company. And that is very much their right to make that choice. You need to make the right choice for your dog. Other people have decided, you know what, we're going to stick around. You know, people act as if, oh, well, people want to hold them accountable. This is not what's happening. And let's be real. I mean, I'm seeing people wish death on people's dogs. This yeah. is not okay what people are yeah. saying to the employees, to their supporters, to each right. other. And yeah. Holly points out the anonymity of the internet makes people act and say things they might not have the guts to say in person. You're yeah. absolutely right, Holly. Yep, absolutely. The keyboard warriors, and they get really nasty. So that is our hour on yes. Bones. So you guys make good choices. <laughs> yeah, investigate, ask questions, be sure you're comfortable with it. Um, Read the instructions. Yes, and and share with us what you learn about different companies and what their process is. You may save somebody, you know, some extra work. Yeah. You find out their, their air drying happens at 150 degrees, share it. If a company is allegedly doing bad things, there are official channels by which you can go yeah. to report them. And yeah. take it up with the company. And if, if you do find proof of something that's wrong with a company, like you would with a restaurant, you know, you'd call the health department, you'd call a regulatory agency and make a complaint. And then there would be a government investigation of, you know, whatever. Right. That is the right way to do it. That's the okay. way to do it and, and accomplish your objective of keeping our dogs safe. Absolutely. You guys have a great Sunday. We'll see you Tuesday. See ya.